What's going on smart people? In my last videos I gave a very surface level explanation of the graduate physics qualifying exam because I, I really didn't know the specifics. It's on everything, don't fail it. Okay, cool, I packed my textbooks. Today I want to get into the specifics as laid out by the university itself and then I'm going to stop talking about it. I know you're probably getting sick of it. So we're going to go over a PDF given by the university that's on the qualifying exam, how it's structured and formatted, how much it matters, uh, don't fail it, things like that. And then I'll go into an email that just says how the time constraint is going to be structured for this year's or this semester's exam. So let's get into it. Qualifying examination, D1. Uh, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's just saying it's a good way of assessing our grad students' abilities to not be bad grad students. The main purpose of the qualifying exam is to aid the faculty in judging each student's preparedness and ability to perform graduate work and making timely recommendations to each student's concerning a uh, future course of study. Fair enough. Format and content of the examination. This is a written examination. I know some people were asking if there was going to be an oral aspect to it. I think there is one for the comprehensive exam in the future that the PhD students have to take, but this is for everybody and there is no oral part. The problems will be generally but not necessarily be taken from appropriate textbooks. The textbooks used for a particular examination will be announced well in advance. Uh, the student will be expected to work two senior level problems in mechanics, E&M, modern physics or geophysics, and a senior level problem in thermodynamics and optics. A choice will be given in each of the five categories. Now that's, that's cool. So the way that it is structured is, uh, or at least how the previous exams looked, is there would be three questions, choose two to do, which I'm more than okay with. I didn't know that they were including optics. That's a little worrisome, but whatever, we'll, we'll get to that. When students must take the examination, graduate students who enter with a master's degree in physics should take the examination during their first semester all grad students must take it no later than their second semester. I'm going into my second semester, we all are, all the first year grad students, and we're taking it pretty much as soon as next semester starts. Okay, so I guess it's not out of the ordinary. Uh, no student may take the examination more than two times. A student not following these instructions during any academic year will lose department support, blah, blah, blah. A, a missed examination counts as failing. Okay. So if you fail once, you can take it again. I think there's another one offered in the fall. Uh, hopefully I don't need, hopefully it doesn't come to that. I'm hoping to knock it out of the park first time. Scheduling of the examination. It'll be given two days early in the fall and in the spring semesters. Not two times each in those semesters, one in the fall, one in the spring. No textbooks, uh, no integral tables, class notes, all that stuff. You can bring non-programmable calculators and integral tables will be provided. Okay. Several faculty members will be asked to submit and grade the problems. Uh, that, that's kind of nice. One of my favorite things about this test so far is that it's not multiple choice, which means partial credit exists. That's a good sign. The committee shall consist of three faculty members, at least three faculty members. Uh, I don't really care too much about this. You can pause the video if you want to know about who's grading the paper. Examination scores and recommendations. A student achieving a 75% or better is automatically admitted to do further work towards their doctorate. Now they say doctorate here, but master's students also have to take this. This does not preclude terminating with a master's degree if the student so desires and satisfies the appropriate requirements. If a student achieves less than a 75%, the qualifying examination committee will weigh all of the data concerning the student and make one of the following recommendations to the faculty. Admit the student to, do, uh, to forward their work towards their doctorate, so maybe you can do less than 75 and I'll let it slide a little bit and you can still get your PhD, I guess, or pursue it. Limit the program to a master's. Take the examination again during the next semester. This recommendation is normally made if the student scores below 75 on his or her first attempt. Discontinue graduate work. This recommendation is normally made if the student scores below 60% twice. The faculty as a whole may accept or modify each recommendation of the qualifying examination committee. So 75% you can keep on with your doctorate. Get 15% less than that, you are out. I guess if you failed it twice, which, I mean, based off of the problems that I showed uh, in the two videos ago, one video ago, I don't even remember at this point, they didn't seem that 
that hard. I don't think it'll be that hard to not get a 60 on, but maybe I'll eat those words. Who knows? I really don't know what the statistics are for people who fail it their first time. I don't know if that's a common thing to happen. I don't know if that's it's expected to just get your bad exam out of the way and then retake it later. I don't know. Uh, then it gets into, okay, so possible termination of support. If at any time during the academic year or the preceding summer a grad student receives a recommendation from the department to discontinue the graduate study, that's a weird way of phrasing it, uh, the student's support will not extend past that academic year. I recommend that you get kicked out of the program. That would suck. But, I mean, I guess it's, it's necessary. If you're not doing well with, if you're a grad student who can't do undergraduate physics, it sounds fair to me. It sounds like a super fair structured test. Maybe when that test date comes, I'll have different words to say about it. I don't know. Uh, and then we'll go over to this email real quick. Dear grad students, as usual, uh, let's just get into this. This just gives the, the regular schedule of this qualifying exam that's coming up. Um, it's going to be the first Saturday after classes start, January 19th. It's going to be two sessions on the same day from 9 to 1 and then from 2 to 6, so eight hours total. From 9 to 1, the test is going to be classical mechanics and thermodynamics. 1 to 2 is a lunch break that's provided by the physics department. And from 2 to 6, we'll be doing E&M and quantum mechanics. I, I kind of like that. One thing that was kind of frustrating with the physics GRE is there's no separation of the different, there's no pattern to it. So if one question would be classical mechanics, the next one is going to be quantum. So this is nice that it's going to... So I, I like that they're keeping them separate is basically all I'm trying to say. Then uh, the student will be asked to solve two out of three problems in each of the four subjects. Uh, the subject areas, papers, calculators... They're not, they're not, they're right, so this is just reiterating what the other page says. All grad students who have not passed the exam or have passed at the master's level and wish to try again for a doctorate level pass are expected to take it at that time. That's something that I also didn't really know. Uh, I didn't know that there were tiers that you could test into or out of, meaning I tested into a master's level so I can do a master's, or I tested into my PhD so I can do a PhD. I didn't know that it worked like that. That's kind of surprising to me. I wouldn't suspect that a master's student would, in their first year, think any different from a PhD student. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, Maybe there's just something I'm not thinking of. Let me know in the comment section why I'm being an idiot and don't understand that. Uh, but that's it. That's it. So in a little bit over a month, I have to take this qualifying exam. I'm stressing it not too hard, though, because it seems like the ball's in our court. It's like, here's how you think. Here's plenty of time to think. Here's subjects not at the graduate level, at the undergraduate level. You know, have at it. And don't get less than 75, apparently, which... You know, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen. Let me know in the comment section, do you think this sounds better than, worse, or equal to the physics GRE? Let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you guys there. I think you already know my opinion.